welcome to IPC Apex Expo 2023. Um, it's day one, the show has literally just opened. I'm joined by Tim DeRosset from Brooks Automation. Thanks for coming to see us. Good morning, Ian. Hi. So, um, yeah, we, it feels like a, a big show. There's a lot of exhibitors here. And people are, you know, actually coming through the doors quite quickly. There's a queue outside. So it feels like we're getting back to the good old days in a way. I think it? I think so. It seems like it. So, yeah, lots of activity and uh, lots of excitement. So, yeah, we're glad to be here. So, actually, just I mean, we haven't spoken before. So just give me a brief overview of what Brooks is about. Okay, so Brooks uh, Automation is a global uh, uh, manufacturing company. Uh, our core uh, market is semiconductor, so vacuum uh, automation and, and uh, semiconductor robots. And uh, we work within the group that's Emerging Automation Group uh, that uh, we have a brand of uh, collaborative robots uh, that do uh, you know, uh, uh, PCB, PCA handling, test, and, uh, and packaging. So, uh, so we're here uh, talking with customers talking with partners around uh, some of the challenges they're facing and how uh, precise flex uh, 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 cobots can might be able to help right yeah yeah um, and yeah, we've been talking about challenges for a good decade really haven't we <laughs> you know the su su supply chain issue yeah, where we used to say you know when it will end now we just accept it kind of thing but automation robotization is yep. integral to getting around a lot of these issues isn't it well, it's, it certainly fits, uh, yeah, with easing, helping to ease some of the challenges uh, that folks are facing around supply chain uh, uh, issues, reshoring, nearshoring. So a lot of activity the last uh, last few years around, uh, you know, production coming back to North America, Mexico in particular, but but also uh, labor shortages. Uh, it yeah. seems like there's a, just a tremendous uh, amount of uh, labor shortages that we've experienced over the last few years. And it's, I think for a lot of companies, it's not a matter of when they automate, uh, or it's not a matter if they automate, it's when they automate. And they're really starting to take a look. And, and not to replace labor, but to augment their production, augment their workforce so that they can have people focus on higher value, higher level tasks, uh, yeah. So do you find your customers are coming to you with more specific requirements now? You know, it, it, in the early days it was a kind of, well, where can it help? Now it's, we need this, this, and this. Well, I think that's, uh, yeah, that, I think they're they're looking at their broad uh, manufacturing and production requirements, but the, you know a, a lot of the customers are looking at specific areas and applications that they can start with and get success there. And uh, and particularly, some of the manufacturers that haven't automated, haven't used robotics specifically uh, in the past, and uh, they're trying to, I think. Uh, a lot of them are to get small wins uh, in in certain areas and then build from there. And and those are the companies that we see over time being really successful. Yeah. yeah. And do you find is that how your relationship with the customer evolves? Goes from small wins and then they see the benefit of it and it. Yeah. Small uh, wins. Often it is, and we work with it through a channel of uh, systems integrators. So we're a product company, uh, uh, you know, building the the, the the cobots and and the you know some peripherals related to the directly to the cobots. But and we don't we don't deliver solutions, but our integration partners uh, deliver solutions, and that's uh, you know it, it, it's a lot of times it's the relationship with that system integrator that delivers a solution and how they're able to get wins and then build on that for the future. Yeah, yep. and I guess being global means you've you've got a lot big knowledge base as well, haven't you? Yeah, it uh, you know we've got uh, you know Brooks has uh, has operations in 30 countries uh, around the globe in Asia and Europe and uh, certainly in, in in North America as well. So uh, a nice footprint to be able to uh, yeah. and and as you say every each market each you know uh, geographic region is uh, can be quite different. Yeah, uh, a lot of times they're they're trying to solve a lot of the same problems, but their approaches can be different, right. and uh, it's trying to challenge to try to find the commonality there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you see the uh, you know next few years are quite bright, really, aren't they? You know, like we say, reshoring is you know good common sense now, isn't it? Well, at one time it was like, well, we could do this kind of thing, but now it's actually good solid business sense, isn't it? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of customers that are looking to bring back and trying to help us, uh, or ask us for help on how they can reshore, how they can move things back from Asia. Now, not uh, not everything's coming back, but a lot of the you know, a, a lot of the high mix, lower volume of work is coming back, and and a lot of the things that are critical time frames, uh, you know, and, and uh, product launches, product deliveries, or product that changes uh, quite rapid, which we're yeah. seeing that more and more. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thanks for sparing time to talk to us. Yep. I hope you have a productive time at the show. Looking and, forward uh, to it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ian. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you.